Hello guys, welcome. My name is Dom McStraw and welcome to the McStraw Method where in today's video we're going to take you through the 101, the basics on proteins, carbs and fats. So as I said here, don't be fooled by the wannabe gurus, just simply understand the basics, the first principles and go from there. Let's just jump into this. Number 101 of protein, ladies. Protein will not make you jacked. You will not get muscle bound. And gents, yes, there is such a thing as too much protein. But let's just get into the basics. Let's keep it simple. Number one, have a look at these sources of protein. We've got our eggs. We've got our red meats. We've got our fish. We've got sources of what you might normally consider dairy, i.e. yogurt, cottage cheese. We've got our black beans and we've got our fish and they're also their white meats up there in terms of things like chicken. Protein comes in at four calories per gram. That's the energy that we consume. It has a high thermic effect. Now, what this means is that your body requires more energy to do a few things when you take your protein to break it down, to digest it and to distribute it across your body. That's what means a high thermic effect. Protein is what we call a satiating nutrient. In other words, when you eat your protein, you will feel full. Case in point, here's a simple example. A donut, and then the same size of the donut as, say, a chicken breast. You'll, you'll scoff the donut, trust me. But you'll get through the chicken breast, and you will find at some point because of its density and it requires you to masticate or chew it a lot more, you'll find that it will trigger in your brain, think, oh, I'm feeling full. I should think I should stop. So therefore, it's actually quite a satiating nutrient. It has a major function in repairing skeletal muscle tissues, i.e. when we do our weight training, protein is what is needed to help us build, recover, repair, restore, and get bigger and stronger. It is also needed to maintain the lean body mass that we do develop. Yes, you don't just get to it and then that's it because the more lean body mass you have, the more energy your body requires and therefore the more, more protein that you're going to need in order to fulfill that activity. Another primary goal of protein is what we call the release of glucagon or commonly called the release hormone. I, what this does, it will release stored energy, glycogen, and therefore not necessarily trigger the storage of new calories like other hormones will do. Carbohydrates. In this day and age, we still have controversy. Let's call the spade a spade. Carbohydrates don't make you fat. Got a variety of sources. We see our pastas, we see our rice, we see our breads, we see all of our raw types of fruits and vegetables, some nuts and bits and pieces. There's a variety of sources. Just think close to the source, whole grown from the ground is probably a good way to think of your carbohydrates. They are like protein. They come in at four calories per gram as far as their energy that they give us. Despite our ever evolving nutritional history, they're still doomed. And as I said, they don't make you fat. We find them in a variety of forms as we've seen before, but we've also things like our starches, the glucose, which is probably our most easily utilized sugar. So things like potatoes, things like rice, fructose, i.e. from our fruits, where basically they are stored as liver glycogen, that's energy. And then lactose, which you commonly refer to as dairy. And as we know, in some populations, we will find that some people are lactose intolerant. Carbs are not an essential nutrient. In other words, yes, we can live without them. But who wants to live without bread? They are essential if your goals are performance-based in your post-workout because they're a quick, easily digestible source of energy. They are stored throughout the day in the liver as glycogen, so that way we can pull upon them when we need them. Paleo, P 
people sort of say paleo is one of those things. Well, paleo is typically low carbohydrate. And if you are into CrossFit or you've got a high performance goal and where you are working out and you need that energy to store on, you will generally find that those types of approaches, the paleo diet, generally doesn't meet the glycolytic needs of the person. And what we say is it can come and move forward into what we call adrenal fatigue. It gets to the point where there's not enough gas in the tank and your adrenals then start to kick in and take over. And you might also refer to this in some sports as bonking, like a runner when they hit the wall or what we commonly say is they will bonk. It's an element of adrenal fatigue. Fats, well, let's just jump at these. These are probably calorically, calorically, how's that, calorifically, whatever. But anyway, they are more dense, but they are essential. So as we said here, look at these sources of our fats. Yes, we'll find them in our meats. We're going to find them in some of our fruits, in our nuts, obviously things like fish. We're going to find them in avocado. We're going to find them in the oils. As we said before, they are more dense. They come in at nine calories per gram so two and a bit times your protein and your carbs and get this these guys are essential you will probably die if you don't get enough fats in your diet you will get emaciated and full away so fats making you fat fats are necessary building blocks to keep us alive hormonally the right type of amount of fat they are fairly neutral when it comes to things like insulin which you might refer to as your storage hormone. They come in a variety of different sources. So let's, for example, the common ones that we hear and we refer to the polyunsaturated. What that basically means is that they will oxidize easily when they get in contact with air. They're also both inflammatory, not necessarily good for, and also anti-inflammatory or good for. So things like your fish, your flax seeds, your canola, your other industrial oils are sources of polyunsaturated fats. The monounsaturated fats, i.e. singular, are the olive oils, the nuts, the avocados, and in fact, red meat is actually 50% monounsaturated fat. Saturated fats, good sources, things like coconut, butter, real butter, not margarine, and the animal fats. And they are good because they are essential for the production of certain hormones like testosterone. Animal fats, they are not just saturated fat, i.e. like red meat's a good example of an animal fat. They can get confusing because things like chicken also contain, you know, a decent amount of omega-6, which we've just said is inflammatory but it's thought of as a low fat source of protein and then the golden trilogy bacon 50 percent long chain saturated fatty acid 40 percent mono and 10 percent polyunsaturated i.e with that different combination it's a good source of fat like anything when it is taken in the right dose for what you are trying to achieve what is your goal Fats, good fats to include in your diet, things like your coconuts. So things like medium chain triglycerides. You'll hear of these lately, MCT, MCT oil getting popular, putting in the coffee, bulletproof coffee. Coconut's a good source. Good energy source. It also has a high thermic effect property, i.e. fat burning. Your real butter, good for your gastrointestinal health. Your avocados, your EVOO, your extra virgin olive oils. They are monounsaturated and they also aid in the uptake of the other micronutrients, your, your vitamins, your minerals that you get from your food. Likewise, so does fish, high in omega-3, also great to help you in the uptake of a variety of micronutrients. Now, short and sharp, there are three other ways that maybe I can help you today. So let's just see what they are. Maybe there's some free training. So this plus a few others are going to go up here at the McStraw method forward slash free hyphen training. Please go and get some. From there, if you want to, I have a free group. We simply call it the long game because that's what we're here for. We're not here for a short time. That is the long game. You'll find that on Facebook. We basically, all of our stuff is there. And it's a fairly new group for the end of 2021. When we go into what we do, we talk about the right dose. We talk about playing the long game. And you can go to the page there, the right dose. We can find a little bit more about the series of steps that we will take on a program with a client 
whether it's a 12-week accelerated, whether it's a 26-week or six months, or even the one-year program, or for some people, maybe even longer, but we simply help them find what the right dose is for them. And if that's you and you think that we can help you, there's an opportunity for you to book your obligation-free call there. So jump on the phone. It starts with a chat. That's it. My name is John McStraw. Please thank you for your time. And there are three things that you can help me with today. Please like, please subscribe, whether it's here, YouTube, social media, Instagram, whatever it is. And also, if you like what we do, please tell a friend.